God to do for you? I think that's a legitimate question.
when they could not come near unto him for the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Verse 5 says, when Jesus saw their faith, yeah. he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Yeah, I don't know about you, but that's good news. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Where, when it says, when Jesus saw their faith, yeah. he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Amen. 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 Today's subject, the elephant in the room. Amen. 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 The elephant in the room. Peter, thank you all so much. probably been about maybe three Sundays, maybe even four. The pastor has been talking about Mark chapter two. Right. We discover many essential elements that took place at this teaching moment. We found out that Jesus is in a small town called Capernaum. <coughs> it's not clear whose house he's at. But he's in a house. We learned about two or three Sundays ago how crowded it was. And we also learned that Jesus used this opportunity yeah. to preach the word to them. When you got out of your warm beds this morning, you got dressed not to come here so people could see how you look. But you came here because you needed to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. We found out from reading that one man was carried by four. I like these. Let me just say these four. Because watch this. Their initial plan was to get their sick friend to Jesus. When was the last time you brought somebody to Jesus? I don't want to talk about anybody's dysfunctional family, but all of us got some relatives that need to see Jesus. And they make their way to what possibly could be Peter's house. Yeah. And to the beginning reader, to the beginning reader, the conclusion could be drawn that their initial intent was right. Yeah. I, I think they had no hidden agenda. Their initial plan was to get their friend to see Jesus. Right. Because they already had drawn the conclusion that Jesus could do something for them. Yeah. Let us 
in our self-assessment, I hope, I hope that our intentions are right. In that thing that are those things that we decide to do, let's make an initial assessment or examine our intentions before we bust a move. Yeah. Yeah. Every day, God allows your feet to hit the floor. Amen. You ought to examine what your intentions are for that day. I told you all this some time ago. That first time a young man came to the house, called himself taking my daughter out. All right. I had to ask one question. Young man, what are your intentions with my daughter? Because I, 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 I think yeah. I think if you have a daughter, it's okay to ask her boo thing what his intentions are. The reason why I think it is important for us to examine our intentions Amen. because we don't want to be guilty of busting a move before thinking about it. That's right. New Bella, every plan, plan, hands, anybody here, you got plans? Plans, you got plans? Watch this, this may help you. Every plan yeah. needs purpose and preparation. The plan is to get their friend to Jesus. And they are prepared to carry him to where Jesus is. It would do each and every one of us well to look at what the plan is and draw their conclusion that their plan and their purpose is, in fact, purpose driven. What we read and what is taking place here in Mark chapter 2, it is obvious that Jesus is the reason. Yeah behind the purpose. Amen. The reason for which something is done, that's what purpose is. What is purpose? It is the reason for which something is done, for which something exists. We used to sing a little song in a church where I was baptized. And that song immediately stated the intent and purpose of the person who was singing a song. The song used to say, I don't know what you come to do, but I came to sing my song. I don't know what you come to do, but I came to kneel and pray. I don't know what you come to do, but I came to sing my song. It stated purpose at the beginning. Can I propose a question to you this morning? What is your purpose for doing what you do? Anybody ever ask you why you do what you do? What is your purpose for doing that thing that you do? For me, carrying one to see Jesus. I don't know how long it took them to get to where Jesus was. We knew, I don't know how long. Cynthia, I don't know how long it took them yeah. to get to Jesus. 
But let me ask you another question. How far is too far to go for a friend? Some of us have gone way out of our way to help a friend. And then there are those who have received phone calls from so-called friends that we looked and saw who it was and put the phone back down. Preach past. How far is too far to go for a friend? Yeah. And before you get all beside yourself, you ain't gonna say man to this. But some of y'all sitting in here right now do stuff for a friend that you wouldn't do for an old family member. Yeah. 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 Truth be told, sometimes family members be acting like knuckleheads. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know if you've ever loaned money to a family member. They feel like they ain't got to pay your money back. Go ahead. Then they'll hit you with their all cuz. Talk. <laughs> How far? It's too far to go for a friend. Jesus sets the epitome of an example of about how far to go for a friend over in the 15th chapter of St. John when he says that greater love hath no man than this than a man who laid down his life for a friend. That's right. Can I ask you a question? Just how far are you willing to go? At what level, watch this, at what level of inconvenience are you prepared to inflict upon yourself for the betterment to help somebody else? Yes, Lord. You ever gave a friend a ride someplace and they get out and they don't even have the audacity to even ask, do you need something on the game? Well, don't ask, just offer. Yeah, yeah. And then get out and more often slam your door. Come on. And I'll say something like that. Hey, hey, I'm going to need that door. <laughs> All right, now tell it. At what level? To inconvenience yourself, are you prepared to go for a friend? Yes. Yeah. Even if don't know how far they had to travel, even if we don't know the weight of said friend, yeah. Yeah. they never complain about what they were doing. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. I can't stand a Negro to do something for you, then complain about doing what they did for you. Right. Right. If, if, it's, if, it's, if it's got you in a rash, then Baby, just don't do it. Be real and true to the game. If you got to complain about it, don't do it. Yeah, yeah. Because when you want, somebody else will. Yeah. Preach, Pastor. Yeah. I cannot tell you. I was not there. I cannot tell you how long they waited at the door. But they exercise something called patience. Yes. When patience is put to the test, that's called persistence. Huh? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm. When persistence is put to the test, yeah. that's called perseverance. Yeah. And when perseverance is put to the test, that's called passion. Yeah. It is your passion for a thing that drives you to reach your goal. Mm -hmm. Some of us got some friends and they think you got it going on. Mm -hmm. right. And they just don't realize you 30 cents short of having a quarter yourself. <laughs> but it's the way you handle your business. Yeah, right? I told y'all put so many quit judging because I'm fat don't mean I'm full. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Passion. That thing that drives us.
to reach your goal. Ask yourself, am I guilty of waking up every day, 365 days a year, 12 months a year, 52 weeks a year, and I ain't got no goal in my mind? Get yourself from around Negroes that don't have no goal in mind. Right? Every day they just operating under the umbrella with an ear. Passion. It drives you to go over and beyond. I like them. I like these four guys. Yes. Because they
some kind of effort. Do you not know that people will work with you when they see you want to better yourself? And sometimes it is the people that we hang around that motivate us to do better. I'm willing to help somebody when I see that they're willing to help themselves first. Yeah. How many times in my clothes? How many times have you turned around because you wanted to be somewhere and there was too many people? <laughs> Yesterday, I'm in Pearland, I need to go to Walmart, Jim. I said, Lord, what is going on here? <laughs> it was a line out the parking lot going down the highway. I said, they're giving out cheese or something? <laughs> what is going on here? And then it hit me. It's the first of the month. <laughs> don't, don't go to no store the first of the month. Because you're going to be in there for a minute. And you know what that sent a message to me? Feel the Lord, that sent a message to me. Hell, everybody ain't broke. <laughs> Y'all perpetrating the fraud. Everybody not broke. And I said, well, and again, too, you, you top the first of the month on with July 4th. All right. But starting today, and I'm moving. We're going to stop feeling sorry for ourselves because the door is closed. Again, I said this the other Sunday. We as people, as, as, as you know, us, us, talking about us, us, that don't have complexion protection, us. We know how it feels to have doors closed in our face. We know how it feels to have to go around to the back. Right. Yeah. But watch this. You know what they did? They take the stairs. They take the stairs, y'all. This is arguably. Once they get up there, you read it. They say they lowered him down. Yeah. This is probably the only time pastors going to agree with friends letting you down. Yeah. So, in my closing, what exactly is the elephant in the room? They lower him down right there in front of Jesus. So, what exactly? is the elephant in the room. Let me ask you a question. Has anybody ever heard of the phrase, the elephant in the room? Okay. I had not heard of it before I had heard of it. But let me just tell you, when you hear that phrase, the elephant in the room, let me tell you what it is. It is a major problem or controversial issue that is obviously present but avoided as a subject for discussion because it is more comfortable to not talk about. Yeah. Right. Everybody in here got their own elephant in the room. Yeah. It's a controversial issue that you avoid at all costs because you don't want to discuss it. We all got our own elephant in the room. Hell, some of us got a herd of elephants in different ways. <laughs> Jesus addresses the elephant in the room 
in verse 5, when he looks up and sees their faith, I believe Jesus saw the faith of all five of them. But there's an elephant issue. All right. Before he heals this man's body, he announces peace to his heart. You know what Jesus did? He says, son, your sins are forgiven. Did y'all hear that? Not done. So what is the elephant in the room? It's that subject matter that we know is there, but we don't want to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. The old people used to call it that you, you, you sweep stuff under the rug. Yeah, yeah. I know it's there, <clears throat> but I don't want to talk about it. Well, when do you want to talk about it? I'm going to talk about it when I talk about it. Yeah. The elephant in the room. All of us. Sometimes it's your child. Yeah. Sometimes it's your relationship. Right. Sometimes it's them Negroes on your job. Right. It's your neighbor. We all got our elephant right. in the room. You know what this man's elephant was? When Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. Yeah. Thank you. I don't want to pass judgment. What sin did he do? Yeah. Did he fornicate? Did he commit adultery? Did he remember the, the Sabbath day and keep it holy? Did he lie on his neighbor? All right. Did he kill somebody? Did he commit murder? Yeah. I don't know what he did. But Jesus forgave him. His son, he, he speaks initially to him. Even though he could not have gotten there by himself, Jesus speaks to him. I don't know who I'm talking to, but that's good news to know. That Jesus says to him, whatever you've done, yeah. don't judge me. You know what he saw initially before he even forgave the man of his sins? He saw the faith from the people that brought him. Yes. Ask God moving forward. Lord, I want to be strong enough to get somebody to where you are. I told you all this some time ago. That some of us got some friends that ain't gonna never come to church. That's right. So you're gonna have to be the Bible that they read. Yes, sir. That's right. And sometimes it's gonna cause you to go out of your way to do it. But it can be done. Yes, Lord. So Lord, yes. help me. Yes, please, Can't speak for anybody else. Yes. But help me. Just like everybody else, we all have our own elephants in the room. Yeah. Something that's there, but we prefer not to talk about it. We don't want to talk about it. And we, are, we, we try to hoard it at all costs. All right. tell you this. That elephant will never go away if you don't talk about it. He sees their faith. He doesn't talk to them anymore. He talks to the person that hates. give up on me. Let me ask you a question. And if it's you, I want you to stand if it's you. Somebody gave up on you. If that's you, stand. Somebody don't gave up on you. Because they did 
didn't see the potential in you at that moment. But thank God somebody didn't give up on you. I got a raise when everybody else was getting laid off because somebody saw something in me that I didn't know that was bad.